What's up guys and welcome to Idaho Fly Life. Today we're going to be doing our first product review. Now the product that I'm going to review today is going to be this switchback wading belt system by Fish Pond. This is the pro version and right off the bat I want to tell you it comes in pretty expensive at about $150. So just so that's out of the way, that's right around the price range for the pro system. We're going to get into some features. Uh, we're going to get into the pack itself. I'm going to kind of show you inside the pack what I carry in the pack personally. Uh, as well as what I use the pack for. Uh, the other thing on this, I'm going to kind of guide you in. If you're thinking about considering buying this system, um, I'm going to tell you why you would want to buy it, why you wouldn't want to buy it, the pros and the cons. Now, right off the bat, Fish Pond's not paying me for this. They don't know I exist, obviously. <laughs> um, so this is just something that I purchased myself to fill a niche that I specifically had. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. Thanks, guys. All right, so first off on this wading belt system, uh, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat. I really love this system. It's simple um, As far as weighting systems are concerned for belts for packs for whatever uh, comes with the net pouch and it comes with the Large bag. I, I forget which system this is off of but it's just the bag that comes off the side uh, And the belt itself as well as the shoulder strap now I, like I say, I really like this system. Uh, I found it, especially with rivers around here where I'm familiar with the river, it's fantastically useful. But what we're gonna do, I'd like to show you this a little bit more in depth. So I'm gonna point the GoPro at a table and we'll go from there. All right guys, so this is the belt system here. Now, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna kinda do this in three parts. So the first one is gonna be just the belt system itself. So pay no mind to the extra accessories on here. Just going to go through the belt system in general so as far as we'll start with the shoulder strap because this is the thing that uh, i may have the biggest complaint with and not to say it's not comfortable the shoulder strap is extremely comfortable easy to use uh it, it's ambidextrous shouldn't say ambidextrous but you can sling it on either side just by popping the clip and moving it to the other side so as you'll see there right left whatever side you want to have open or whatever side you want to sling it on, you can do so. Another thing that I do like a lot about this shoulder strap is it's got attachment points for zingers. It's got a really nice uh, slide through design for your hemostats or for your scissor clamp, anything like that will work great. It's just got a tab that you clamp your hemostat onto. Um, the one complaint that I have though is, you see how this moves and slides freely? Well, a lot of the times if you have, say, I, I'm running it really light for this reason, but if you have a couple zingers up here with a lot of weight, it'll want to pull the shoulder strap forward. Um, and so instead of being nice and comfortable on your shoulder, way down here. Now it's a catch-22 because I also like to be able to move the shoulder strap down to have better access to things like my nippers, things like my hemostats, but I really wish that there was some way, some clip or some lock, some kind of push button lock here that you could lock that strap down. So, and honestly, that's the biggest complaint of this whole system is just this shoulder strap. Now it's, you know, it's easy to work around. If you tighten up that shoulder strap and, and you're conscious of it, it's really easy to keep it on your shoulder, but that's the only real complaint that I do have. And it works, it still works ridiculously well. I thought this was gonna be a harder system to use when I bought it. This is the most convenient fly fishing gear storage system that I have. So next thing we'll move on to is gonna be the belt itself. Uh, the belt does have a nice foam underbelt here. Uh, it's very, very comfortable with waders on. Just a hair less comfortable without waders, but it still is comfortable enough to be out there six, eight hours with no waders on it. Um, and it's constructed very good. Uh, it seems very durable, and it's got a couple of features. The biggest one I think you guys will be interested in is actually the slider rip. So you have your padding for your belt here, and then you have this very, very thick rail system and what the rail system allows you to do is with like with this side pack here I can move it back out of my way when I'm not using it and this is at the back of the belt it's really comfortable to walk this way to be in the river with that behind you then when I need to grab a fly I need to grab some floatant or like maybe a strike indicator or some sinkers I can slide it forward so it's easily accessible then when I'm done I just slide it right back and out of the way now that's really what makes this belt system in my opinion, really worth the price you're gonna pay. There is no more convenient system for 
belt management of your fly fishing tools and equipment than this. And I've tried a few different ones, but they all seem to want to fix the pack into place. So you always have to have the pack in one location. This allows you to slide that pack around. So it's really convenient. Um, and of course, that's on both sides. If you want to swap the pack to the other side, you can. There is a slider rail on this side as well, and you can slide with the other side of the belt as well. Uh, there is a net holder here. Uh, net holder, I mean, it's really well built. It's just a net holder. It, it's, a, it's a flap, all it is. But it's really well built. It, it seems very, very durable. And, you know, I mean, these seams are, are stitched just as thick as you can probably stitch a seam. Um, that looks like it's triple, maybe quadruple stitched up and through the corners of that net holder, so it's not coming out. Uh, as far as, like, the buckle goes... Uh, it's it's just a buckle. It's convenient. It's large size, easy to pull on, easy to, to easy to put on, easy to pull off. Uh, I kind of wish it was a Cobra buckle system. The Cobra buckles are really readily available now, and they're made out of metal. I think they'll last a little bit longer. But as far as this goes, it, it's still a good clip. I'm sure you could change this out to a Cobra buckle if you want. And the buckle retainers work really, really well. So I just because it, of course in the wintertime I'm gonna be wearing a coat, so I'm gonna be a little bit thicker around the midsection, not that I'm not already kind of thick anyway, but uh, I, I can adjust this belt pretty easily. Uh, and then of course you've got the pack. Now the pack we're gonna be getting into at the end. What I will say right now is this is an extremely well thought out, well built pack. Um, I'm gonna go into what's in the pack a little bit more and the pockets and all that kind of stuff on the pack. I'll be taking everything out of it. But this is a, really quality item and it's it comes with the pro system this is what makes it this uh, switchback belt the pro system is this particular pack the hundred dollar system comes with a much smaller pack it doesn't have some of the features that i really love but this pack definitely definitely does a great job so let's get on to uh, well, we'll go with the customizations that i've kind of put on the belt what i'm using on the outside surface of the belt and then we'll get to the bag last Okay guys, so for customizations on this belt, uh, the first thing right off the bat that you'll notice is I have bear spray. Now, I'm in Idaho, there are a lot of grizzly bears, there are a lot of black bears. We've seen them out uh, and it's just something that I would always recommend having is some sort of bear spray in a tube. Uh, I think I got the bear spray at Costco. Um, so pretty inexpensive, but still have bear spray or something else in case of a bear attack. And I'll let you guess what that is. This is YouTube, so I'm not gonna go into detail on what else you might carry. Uh, moving back from the bear spray on my right hand side. So this is something that is kind of purpose driven for me. So I was gonna go buy the $30 Nalgene holder for this, but I ended up having this little pouch that's actually on hand. It's just something I have laying around. Uh, this isn't really fishing gear. It's actually made by a company called Blue Force Gear, and they make kind of military law enforcement kind of stuff. But what's really cool about this, you can see how small the pouch is. Well, if I want to put a water bottle or like, you know, three beers, big Nalgene bottle, anything really, I can pull on this tab, and now I have a large bag to put whatever I want in there. Like I said, it's, it's about big enough for about three beers. So give or take, that's what you can expect. Uh, three cans, not tall boys. There we go. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say on that. I said family friendly channel, but it is big enough for a Nalgene bottle, big enough for a couple standard water bottles, or like I, like me, I carry a, a Coke bottle pretty much everywhere. Um, okay, next thing here, Opros. Opros makes this thing called a third hand rod holder. This is one of the coolest things I have on this belt, and it's really convenient. It allows you to position, your, put your rod in, Reel on this side, rod of course out the top, lock that rod down, and then walk with it. Or, conversely, because this rotates, you can put your rod in, lock the rod in place, and then tie on a fly. Tie a whole uh, dry dropper rig, tie a nymph rig, whatever, without having to put your rod kind of awkwardly under your arm like pretty much everybody does. Now this comes in handy, especially when I'm doing like fish releases, where I don't want to stick my, my reel in the dirt or stick it off to the side. Especially comes in handy when I'm filming videos, because just having that free hand makes everything a lot easier to adjust. But a product that I would highly recommend. This thing is awesome. 
Uh, they make a mount that you can mount it on your car and swivel it as well. That works pretty well, but uh, this is where I have it on an everyday basis. And it works great. Uh, if you wanted a solution like this, and even if you have a standard weighting belt, uh, these will fit. I believe they go one inch to two inch worth of belt. And it's got clips on the back that just easily slide onto the outside, that slider rail system of this belt. Uh, moving back from there, so seeing the net holder, this is going to be really simple. I have a Cortland net. It's a Walmart net, and it's very inexpensive. Um, I'll probably get something different at some other point, but as far as getting started into fly fishing, a net like this is going to last you years. I think I've had this particular Cortland net for four years now. You guys have seen how much I fish, and it still looks pretty good. Soft release net, and I think it's 30 bucks. So really inexpensive. Uh, it does fit right into the net holder, and this net holder holds the net vertically against your back. I really like that because it keeps the net out of the way. It's not dangling around. It's not getting caught in my fly line. Uh, I really like that. And I use one of these magnetic retainer leashes for it. Um, really the only reason I use this is because I've always used it. After the first fish, so after I pull that magnetic retainer off the first time, I generally am just sliding this net in and out and leaving the magnet off of it. But for transport and for right up until that first fish, it does keep everything nice and out of the way. Uh, as far as accessories, you know, on the strap, I also have MFC hemostats. Um, I just like MFC, so you'll think I'm a sucker. I like the brown trout fish art. Um, the hemostats work really well. They're hemostats. They, they, they hold a fly or whatever. Crimp a split shot. It, there's nothing special about these hemostats, except that I really like the coloration. I like the size. And they've worked really well for a couple seasons for me. So can't recommend those enough. And you can still find those on like the MFC tying scissors that we talked about in a previous video. Uh, and then I've got the Sims Pro Nippers. I'll do a separate review on these because it's they're really expensive. I mean, they're like 80 bucks for this set of nippers. Some of you might like the features. Some of you might consider this a neat item, but mo for most people, this is just frivolous. Buy a set of $5 nippers from your fly shop, you'll be fine. I just, I fish the winter time, so there's a couple really nice features of this that I use. But in reality, if you are if you fish spring through fall or, or summer, just summer, like a lot of fishermen do, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's great fishing, uh, this is probably going to be overkill. But as far as accessories and, and how I kind of tricked this pack out, that's it. Actually, there was one more thing. So this is on the pack itself, but uh, kind of a tippet tender deal. Um, this is just the tippet spool holder by Fish Pond. Integrates really well into this pack. It's got a loop down here that, that seems to tie off very nicely. Uh, these tippet holders are really convenient, especially when you're doing something like this or a sling pack if it doesn't already have it integrated because having those spools of tippet kind of free floating around in here is not very organized. Something like this is very, very organized. And I find with this pack, when I slide this, this large pack to my back, that tippet tender doesn't get in the way of anything. So that tippet spool holder is great. Uh, but that's as far as the customizations on the outside, that's it. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about here is gonna be the bag. Okay guys, so the last portion of this whole deal is the bag. Now, this is the real selling point of this system. The weighting belt by itself is about $50. Uh, you can get the smaller bag and the weighting belt for about $100. But this is the Pro System, it's $150. And this is really the selling point of the Pro System, okay? <clears throat> now, I keep a lot of stuff in here. I think you're gonna be surprised by how much stuff is actually in this bag. And I'll just start front to back. So as far as the exterior of the bag goes, shove that bag down in there. Uh, you have multiple different pulls, uh, multiple areas to attach things. Like this is that tippet tender we were looking at previously, um, and, and it's just attached right on the front. These pull tabs are very strong. Um, now I think this is like some sort of plastic nylon mix or weave or plastic coated nylon. Um, as far as like. The hardware goes, the zippers, these are really positive zippers. They're really nice and high quality zippers. Uh, coming back a little bit off of there, so you'll see here you've got a, a pull tab here. Uh, this is for like zingers, um, anything like that, anything you want to attach to the front of the bag, but mine are blank because I generally use the strap for attaching what I need here. And then you've got this nice Velcro patch. 
Um, this is obviously the loop side of the Velcro. Uh, you can attach like the um, one of the tacky fly strips right here. I think it's called their fly dock. That works really well. Uh, you can also just put your hooks through. Makes it easier, obviously, if you have barber, uh, barbless hooks. But let's get into the pockets here. First one that we're gonna do is this front zipper pocket. And this is just a small zipper pocket that I keep my fishing license and really nothing else in. Uh, you can keep like extra liters in there. That works pretty well. But as far as for me, maybe I'll put my cell phone in there sometimes, but that's really it for that front compartment. It can be utilized for more. Now coming back from there, this is, this is the best part of this bag, right? It has this very large magnetic pocket in the front. Um, and this makes it really convenient. So stuff that I use all the time. And I'm going to be pulling everything out as I do this and explaining what's in here. I've got strike indicators in fly cups. So a bunch of different strike indicators. I've got my Flyagra and my desiccant, my dry shake. And you'll notice there, it, it closes back up really easily. Um, that's really one of the selling points. So that's, that's as far as like the front compartment here. Um, you'll see that open space, that's where all of that goes. Next, I've got some finger guards. Those really aren't for me, those are for people that I go with. Um, I'll use them occasionally if I have cuts or something on my fingers just from the job I do outside of, you know, fishing and all that good stuff. And then I've got sinkers. Uh, these are the Skinny Water Camel Drops. Uh, that was in, uh, most of this stuff is going to be in my Things You Need for Fly Fishing video. Uh, I'll, I'll link that somewhere over here. Uh, 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 we'll try that. <laughs> okay, then this has a nice zippered compartment, and this is where I keep a lot of leaders. So a lot of Rio PowerFlex, PowerFlex Plus leaders. Um, it's just a great spot for them. They're really convenient, but you're not going to be swapping out leaders near that much, right? Uh, as far as this section goes, I think that's it for this section. But what I like about this section, obviously it's got uh, some soft material here. If you want to use this for like another fly patch, you can do so. Um, you know, I believe it's actually a, a loop side Velcro as well. Uh, but this is really convenient on the water. So I'm swapping, you know, I'm adding... Um, floating to flies really often when I want to change say an indicator it's really convenient to have everything stored right here that I need quick access to right and then the next section here so this is the the big bulky section and this is going to be where I keep my fly boxes and a couple other things so as you'll see in here I'm going to start pulling stuff out and it's going to kind of look like a clown car but it packs in here really well so I have, on the left-hand side of the in internals of this bag, I have three fly boxes, and one of these happens to be a big tacky. This is, oh, I don't think they sell this one anymore. I think this is the dry fly box. Uh, and then two smaller, um, these are, I think these are just like uh, Sportsman's Warehouse boxes. On the other side, same thing. Three more fly boxes for a total of six boxes. And the crazy thing is, you could do six of these tacky boxes, and that is a ton of flies. But then I've got this, uh, a wind box. This is a little bit thicker of a box, but this is for dry droppers or, or you know, double, double nymph rigs for pre-tying those. And then just a couple other, you know, a dry fly box and another uh, large dry and a couple other things in there as well. The, what, what's in the fly box isn't so much as important as how many freaking fly boxes you can fit in there. And then... On the sides of those fly boxes, I found that if you have some of these smaller fly boxes, you can fit these. So if you look in here, if I can get a good view, you can actually fit these on the sides of the other fly boxes. So that's seven fly boxes. Um, you don't, if you need more than seven fly boxes, you're probably on water that you don't know. And it's not really the recommended use for this bag. Uh, there are two other small pockets here. Now they're hard to get to when you're packed with fly boxes. So the only other thing I have in here are some of these old foam strike indicators uh, with the, they've got the toothpick and all that. I find sometimes those help me with a really gentle presentation if I'm on either very, very clear water or in areas where fish are spooky. But as far as this, oh, and then it's got a divider. So you can actually move, remove the center divider for a much larger internal bot or excuse me, internal pocket. Uh, you have like the Bugger Barns, the Bugger, Bugger Barn Juniors, or any of the cliff boxes that are like for articulated streamers. 
You can actually remove this divider and stick those in here as well. So it comes a very, very versatile pack. Now that's it. This is, this is a whole day's worth of fishing for me. Um, I have nymphs, dries, all of that. Every fly I could possibly want, other than some of my articulated streamers, fit in this, in this pack. This is really, especially if you're on water that you know really well, or you're in a place where maybe there's only one or two things hatching, or you know what's going to hatch for the day, this is really where it's at. I mean, I have like woolies and stuff in here, a lot of big, like the chubby Chernobyls, big, big grasshoppers, which be just because of the season for that right now. But this is kind of where this excels, right? If you're, if you know the water, and you know what's going to be hatching, this is where a pack like this is really going to excel. It is versatile, comfortable, and in my opinion, it's probably one of the most well thought out packs with the slider mechanism and the ability to attach your own accessories to it that's on the market today. Uh, Fish Pond did a great job, and I, of course, they don't pay me. This is just something I bought myself, and this is awesome. Now, there are some, some limitations to a pack like this, right? So. Let me go grab a couple other things and I'll, I'll kind of go into some limitations here. Okay, so the limitations to this pack and really the only limitation I see is the storage capacity. So if you need a little bit of storage, more storage capacity, you might consider something like a Sim Sling Pack that you can take off and set on the bank or a vest of some variety, Fish Pond, Patagonia, Sims, whatever. Um, but as far as, as that goes, I can, I want to encourage you maybe to try something like this. And the reason I say that is you'll find that most of the time you don't need every bug that you have tied. Uh, it's very rare. Sometime in the spring and mid, early midsummer, I will go really heavy. But most of the year, this is going to do me. This is going to be exactly what a lot of you need most of the year. Like I said before, um, I'm going to put a link down to this pack in the description. It's an Amazon link. I'll try and find one that's for Prime. If, you, if you've watched this review and you really like this pack and you're dead set on buying it, if you use my link, really helps me out. Uh, Amazon gives me a little something for it. It's really nice. doesn't cost you anything extra. But uh, like I said, that, that's really it for this pack. Um, just a couple things at the end. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I will be doing more product reviews. That Sim Sling Pack and that Patagonia Vest, they're gonna get their own reviews. Uh, there's like my Corker's Boots. There's several other things that I've used for a really long time that I'd like to review for you. And several things that I've used that I really don't like that I'd also like to review for you. Um, the other thing, if you want some stickers and soon to come there will be another product, but idahoflylife.com. We have a blog. We've got a couple things going on there. Um, and of course, links to YouTube videos and all that as well. But IdahoFlyLife.com, if you'd like a sticker to support the channel, really helps us out as well. Guys, I, I hope this review helped you out. This is one of those things that, it's rare that I find a product and it works so well as this pack. Um, I really, I had to do this one first. There are other products that I've used longer, but this was the one that I've used and I went, wow, this is amazing. If this sounds like something that you'd like, go pick one up. $150, it'll be well spent. It's something that you probably won't regret this purchase. If you use it for its intended purposes and all that, and you, you are aware of the downfalls that it has ahead of time. But guys, thanks for watching the video. Again, I really appreciate it. Um, have a good day, and we'll get back to you on Friday.